You know, I feel like I say this about every character, but Zeta is a really fun character to use. Much of her playstyle relies on wanting to be in the air as much as she can, chaining hits off of the enemy to loop it to powerful combo finishers. In many ways, this can be a benefit, allowing her to dodge many attacks while continuously attacking enemies with heavy hitting attacks. This aerial combat is really fun to take advantage of and the primary selling part of her kit as she'll be in the air more than any other character in the game, and maximizing how many combo finishers you can do with this aerial combat will be the key to getting the most out of her. In this video, I want to discuss Zeta, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. If you enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much, and I do plan to cover everyone. I also have a Discord you can join if you want to be alerted when I release new videos, or a Twitter you can follow, both in the description. Let's get into it! So, Zeta is actually pretty straightforward in how you want to play and approach her. By using your normal attack combo, the fourth hit will send you into the air. Her first support skill, Accelerating Flare, states that she can create an airborne attack loop by pressing the standard attack button, in my case X, with perfect timing. Her attack will increase with each loop. The timing isn't too difficult, it's basically right before you touch the enemy is when you're going to want to press the button. You can loop infinitely if you have good timing, but typically this is not advisable as just looping is not going to be your largest source of damage, especially when factoring in damage caps. Even if your attack continues to increase, you'll likely still be hitting damage cap after only a few loops, or even less depending on your setup. Pressing the combo finisher button, in my case Y, while in one of these loops perform a loop finisher, a high damage attack that spins as you land on the ground. So this brings me to the next point. Her second support skill is Arvis Resonance. This states that landing a loop finisher after three loops will inflict Arvis Vermeer on the enemy, which is just a status effect that increases the damage you deal to the enemy as Zeta. While this is nice, you can also apply this from a skill so that isn't the major benefit of the three loops other than refreshing the debuff if needed. Typically, you are going to want to do three loops though, because doing so will upgrade your loop finisher into the combo finisher Arvis Hammer which is a much more powerful version of the loop finisher, able to reach over 700,000 damage with all the damage cap increases. This means that ideally you'll want to perform three loops at minimum before performing your loop finisher so you can use Arvis Hammer and get a lot of additional damage from the loop finisher. If you don't have enough damage on Zeta to reach the damage cap, you can even go beyond three loops to get that extra attack power needed, but ideally you'll only need three loops. So the ideal gameplay loop for Zeta is going to be maximizing your time spent in the air and using as many Arvis Hammers as possible because it is your highest damage attack, which means you need to be able to use this after only 3 or 4 loops every time to get the most out of it. It is also very much worth mentioning that it is possible to only need 2 loops if you have the skill Vengeful Flames active, which is their supplementary damage skill. Essentially by delaying your loop until the very last moment with this skill active, it seemingly counts for two loop hits on your target, allowing you to only perform two loops to get access to Arvis Hammer, which can be a great way to increase your DPS further if you can learn the timing. This can be made a lot easier with one of her unique sigils, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Your standard combo will always put you in this loop finisher state, but a link attack will allow you to go into the air and immediately use an Arvis Hammer afterwards, meaning that link attacks are going to be very beneficial to Zeta to maximize her damage. As Ada really wants to be in the air and wants to get there as fast as possible, she has a couple other methods besides this as well, the first being her parry, which is tied to her combo finisher button when you are not in the air. Truth be told, this can be a little difficult to take advantage of, but if you know a boss attack is coming and you can nail the timing, this can be a quick way to get into loops without needing to use an attack combo. Zeta also has a skill, Spear of Arvis, lets her immediately enter loop combos as well. Jumping into the air normally and using attacks will still need to use combos before starting your loop, so that isn't as efficient as you might think. Your loop finisher also has some end lag that you can easily cancel by dodging or rolling out of the attack after landing, which isn't too hard to time or to do. It's also worth mentioning that Zeta has some issues with bosses that like to move around a lot since this can affect your loops, since you may touch the ground without being able to use a loop finisher if you can't get close enough to the enemy if they keep on moving, which can make timing important and also another reason you want to be using Arvis Hammers as soon as possible. All in all, Zeta isn't too complex to understand, but does take some practice to nail the timing for her loop cancels. There's some more tech, but that it's more related to her skills, so we'll talk about that more in that section. Let's get into setup. As you might expect at this point, I'm running the Terminus weapon because it is simply the best weapon you have in the game thanks to Catastrophe and Sigil Booster, Catastrophe being one of the absolute best effects in the game, damage cap plus 100% so you do even more damage, attack plus 50% when you're under 45,000 health, just a really powerful effect to do a lot more damage. And Sigil Booster is a great effect as well to uh, increase the level of all of your equipped sigils so they have a little bit more benefit 
If you do not have the weapon yet, if you have not gotten the drop yet, you can still run the crit rate weapon and have plenty of success with her. You can run the ascended weapon as well and probably have plenty of success also. Her two unique sigils are pretty interesting in the fact that they are not necessarily something that seems to be required, but if you have them with other certain orange traits, they can be nice to have. So, Crimson's Clout, damage dealt plus 25%. This is pretty nice to have as a general attack increase. It's not as strong as most orange trait attack increases, but it's just absolutely worth running if you have an orange trait on the uh, sigil already, simply because you will get two attack increases on the same sigil, so you might as well just run it. For this one, I have life on the line. This increases the damage I deal uh, in exchange for my allies being able, unable to heal me. As long as you're running Potion Hoarder here, this isn't really a big deal because you'll still be able to heal yourself plenty, and you shouldn't be dying in any fights unless you're uh, really, really struggling. So... Life on the line, pretty easy way to get a 36% attack boost here, which is pretty nice to have. So next up we have Crimson's Flight. This is a pretty interesting sigil because it might just seem to be like a crutch at first glance where it extends the timing window and you might be thinking, well, if I'm really good at the loops, do I really need this? Well, the answer is maybe. For one, it makes it a lot easier to do the two loops into Arvis Hammer for the uh, supplementary damage skill, where you get to uh, kind of glitch it out and get two loops counted as one. It makes it a lot easier to get that extra timing, so you could argue that unless you are really good at the game, this can just be a straight DPS increase for uh, limiting the amount of loops you do while that skill is active, making it a lot easier to get the two loops on that. Secondly, and this is not entirely confirmed, but there's been some testing in the Discord server and the Discord channel for the character, and apparently, this actually can increase your damage by making the third or fourth loop function as one loop earlier, allowing you to maybe potentially reach the damage cap on your Arvis Hammer a little bit easier if you have this equipped. So, take that with a grain of salt. I'm not entirely sure if that is 100% confirmed yet, but that is something that people have been testing, so it might actually be worth running this. And just in general, I think it can be nice to have just to make your... Uh, Supplementary damage skill and your two loops a little bit easier to get the Arvis Hammer off of just because it increases the timing window of that at the very least. Now, you can call me bad if you want, but I do like running that. And I also have a pretty good orange trait on this as well. Linked Together is just a really good skill to have. It increases your uh, link attack damage, increases uh, link gauge. It's really, really nice to have. Chain Burst damage has so many useful effects in just one skill slot. Really good for team support as well, so I really like it. The trace of my weapon, since I almost forgot to mention them, I just have critical hit rate up. Zeta likes dealing critical hits, as you might imagine. And then I have combo booster and another four levels of link together. So combo booster is pretty good on Zeta. You actually get a nice benefit out of this because uh, you're usually constantly attacking the enemy and the supplementary damage will count as additional combo hits. And you're always attacking the enemy with your uh, attacks when you're looping on the enemy. So it's not too bad just to have as a general damage boost. Apparently, the stacks additively with uh, life on the line. That's not really a huge deal if you have a bunch of other damage increases to make sure you're hitting the cap as well on all of the other sigils that you have equipped, like I currently have for the most part. War Elemental is just one of the absolute best sigils in the game. Definitely run this on pretty much everyone you can. Just a free 20% damage boost that bypasses the damage cap because it makes all of your element attacks count as superior. So, really awesome sigil to have. And then I have my obligatory 4 damage cap, 5 pluses to make sure I'm hitting the total amount of cap on this, reaching the maximum amount of damage cap possible, so all my attacks are doing the maximum amount of damage that they absolutely can. The unique sub-traits on them are two quick cooldowns. Quick cooldown is really nice to have because I get a uh, reduced uh, cooldown on my skills, meaning I can use skills a little bit more often, which is always a pretty nice effect to have. And then I have improved dodge. I really love improved dodge. It gives you up to seven dodges in a row, which is really awesome, and it also increases the timing window for your dodges, gives you enhanced dodging ability. Really, really nice to have. And then the Obligatory Potion Hoarder. Absolutely run this, especially if you're running life on the line, because uh, you want to make sure you can heal yourself. Really awesome effect, because it's just... You get so many extra potions, so many ways to heal yourself. Really, pretty much this should, pretty much the best sigil sub-trait in the game. Pretty much required on every set, if you ask me. Then I have two supplementary damages. I don't really have a way to fit a third one with the current setup that I have right now, unless I had a better overmastery, so I only had to run one crit rate or something like that. But supplementary damage with just two of them, you still get a 74% chance to trigger this. This stacks, added, this stacks additively with her uh, art that grants supplementary damage, so you don't lose any benefit from having this or anything like that when you have anything active. You still get the full benefit of this as long as you have it equipped. It's a free 20% damage boost every time it activates, so three-fourths of the time we get that 20% damage boost on our skills. Really nice to have. And then I have critical hit rate. Two of these to make sure I hit that 100% crit rate. Now, with, if I only have one of these equipped with my current setup, I reach 91% critical hit rate, which is honestly fine. The 100% is just for a little bit of consistency, but you can definitely run another uh, damage booster or something like that 
I am just running at a critical hit rate, so I have access to Aegis, since I want to make sure that I am not dying in one hit because I have a Tyranny equipped. So I, that's why I've just decided to run a critical hit rate along with an Aegis for this particular setup. And then I have Stamina as well. Stamina is just one of the absolute best attack increases in the game. It's 50% as long as you're at 100% HP, essentially, which is really, really high. Very nice attack increase to have. One of the best in the entire game. And of course, Tyranny is also a really nice attack increase as well. 20% of your max HP for a 36% attack boost just for one level of it. Also a really nice trait to have. And then I have Guts attached to my Tyranny. Guts is another really nice sub-trait to have. It allows you to live at 1 HP no matter what, every 2.5 minutes, essentially. Great sub-trait. Uh, works really well with Potion Hoarder as well to make sure you can stay alive a lot longer in fights. So that is the setup I'm currently running. can absolutely run some other things. A lot of Zetas like running a raw combo booster sigil from what I have seen, which can be really nice to have. There's other attack boosters you could consider running as well, like Insult to Injury, which is not additive with uh, some of these other attack boosts, so that can give you a nice increase as well, since you basically always have a debuff applied to the enemy with your uh, skill set. So that can be something to consider with Zeta, which is pretty nice. All in all, you could run Auto Revive, you could even run Drain, since you're doing a lot of attacks to an enemy at once, if you want to use that as a way to heal, but... All in all, I do like the setup I currently have. If you have better uh, overmasteries you can, or better sub-traits on your sigils, you can definitely have an even better setup than I have here, though. So speaking of which, let's talk about her skills now. So first up, we have Infinite Wonders. This can be used up to three times in a row, and it has pretty nice range and a pretty short cooldown for one individual use at the very least. And if it is fully off cooldown, you can obviously use it three times in a row again. So this is what applies Arvis Fermail, and something you're probably going to want to be starting most fights with because it allows enemies to take additional damage from your attacks, making you able to hit damage cap a lot easier with Zeta, and it's pretty easy to inflict with this ability. Now, this ability has some really interesting and weird tech where if you dodge cancel out of it at the exact moment you strike the enemy, you get a lot more damage out of the skill. I don't know why this is, I don't know why it works like this, but it, it, you can increase your damage by almost double, sometimes even more than double if you do it at the perfect time when you dodge out of this ability, making it actually a pretty decent damaging ability also, which can be pretty nice to have. Now, I don't know if this is a bug, unintended or anything like that, it probably is, but it is pretty cool just to have that additional level of tech on this skill, and it's something to keep in mind if you are using the skill in combat, and it also works really well with improved dodge to uh, allow you to use all three dodges in a row and not have to deal with any kind of lag or cooldown. Then we have Spear of Arvis. This is pretty much an absolutely mandatory skill on her to have because it is a lunge that it acts as a gap closer. It has a really short cooldown, and it also immediately sends you into your high jump so you can start loop cancels and use your loop finisher a little, little faster here. So very, very good skill to have. Even without the damage, it leads into your Arvis Hammer, and you do a lot of damage with that, so you absolutely want this skill no matter what. Wing Clipper is another very good skill. You may not want to run this all the time, but a lot of times this can be a very good skill to have because it, it inflicts paralysis on the enemy. Paralysis is a really useful status effect, kind of uh, stops the enemy for a little bit from moving, allowing you to land your loop cancels a little bit easier if you have a way to follow up this skill into something else. Gives you a way to use Arvis Hammers a little bit easier with the enemy not moving either. So, really nice skill to have. Useful utility for the entire party as well. And then we have Vengeful Flames. This is also pretty much mandatory on her because it's a free damage boost. It adds another 20% damage to all of your hits while it is active, which it's active for about 30 seconds or so. And also, as mentioned earlier, there is the tech where if you are able to uh, use your loop cancels at the perfect time on this, you can potentially lower your three loops to two loops to activate Arvis Hammer, meaning you can increase your DPS even further if you can time it perfectly on the last possible moment when you activate your loop cancel. So this is a really, really good skill to have. Absolutely run this at all times and learn the timing for uh, the loop cancels on this so you can do two loops instead of just instead of three so you can get even more DPS. This is the reason her unique schedule that increases the timing window can also be pretty useful. As far as her other four skills, Reign of Fury, you might want to run this over uh, Wing Clipper in some situations. This will call down a volley of spears that can inflict attack down on the enemy, ensuring that enemies do a little bit less damage over the period of time while this debuff is inflicted, which can be pretty nice as a utility option, and a pretty nice uh, ability in general. We have Signo Drive. You should probably never be running this, because while 25% attack to the entire party sounds nice, most setups are going to be hitting damage cap if you're running with anyone who is good at the game, so they don't really need this attack boost most of the time, so you're probably not going to get the most benefit of this, I would say. Now, there are going to be people who are not going to be able to hit caps on everything, so it still could be nice to have, but you're probably going to be wanting to run your own uh, self-buff with supplementary damage instead, and your other attacking moves, because it's probably going to be more beneficial to yourself and the team. 
Thousand Flames, this is an area of effect that inflicts burn and also removes one buff from the foe. This is very, very specific. I wouldn't run this in most situations. Maybe if you're fighting the Light Dragon who applies himself with a bunch of buffs, maybe this could be useful. But all in all, this is not going to be one of your more damaging abilities or something that I would recommend running most of the time. And then finally, we have Realm's Majesty. This is a better version of her standard parry, basically. It lasts for a lot longer, also does a lot more damage when uh, you actually inflict this, and also sends you into your high jump state. So if you are need to be more defensive, if you're worried about the enemy, this can be a good skill to run over Wing Clipper as well, if you just want to have that extra defensive utility. think you can get some use out of the uh, additional high jumps and loop cancels from this ability. So all in all, she has a pretty good skill set. This is the standard skill set I would recommend running most of the time, though, because it gives you the best mix of damage and utility to have. And with that in mind, let's take a brief look at overmasteries. So obviously you're going to want masteries maxed out for everything, and then for the overmasteries in particular, it's not too much different from most of the characters you've seen so far. Normal attack damage cap up is going to be the most important thing, with skill damage cap up and critical hit rate being right behind it. So I've got some decent levels in all of these with critical hit rate up plus 20% and a uh, full imbue 10% crit rate. You can only have to run one critical hit rate uh, sigil, which can be really nice, but I'm content running two and not having super optimized setups because it's just really, really difficult to get super amazing overmasteries in this game. So you're not likely to uh, be able to do that super often. Normal cap ups, obviously really great. Skill damage cap ups, pretty great with her too, because you want to increase your damage as much as possible. Attack up can be a pretty decent option to have on her as well if you don't have as many offensive sigils that can increase your attack as much as possible. So over um, Skybound Art damage cap up could be something to consider as well. Stun power up is not too bad. It allows you to get a link attacks a little bit easier, and that's something I have as well. But generally, you're going to want to stick to attack increases mostly because those are going to be the most beneficial thing, and critical hit rate up, obviously. So that should cover it for all the general setup and information related to that. Let's finally take a look at combat now. So... Once again, maybe a couple of raid spoilers and proud difficulties, so just be aware of that if you're going to continue in the video. So I'm going to show off a couple fights here. One is a group fight against Blackworm, and then one is uh, part of a solo fight against uh, just the Earthworm. So I'm going to start off by uh, canceling my uh, Infinite Wonders, so I get the additional damage by dodge canceling out of them, and also apply the uh, ability to do extra damage to the Worm. Now, this dragon was targeting me with the laser at the start, which is why I did not immediately rush him at the beginning, because I wanted to make sure I could get out of the way of that. So I'm going to uh, immediately cancel out of my uh, Ar Arvis Hammer into a Link Attack, so I can use another Arvis Hammer immediately afterwards. That's one of the absolute best ways you can start most of these fights. And then I use my uh, Paralysis. I don't know if it effectively went off there, but I did try to use the Paralysis afterwards just to kind of get additional damage on the enemy. And now I'm just going to be looping more combo finishers, as you might imagine, and getting more Aris Hammers off as when I can. Now, I end up barely dodging these effects. I did not get a uh, invincibility like I wanted, otherwise I would have been able to kind of sit in those AoEs and not have too much to worry about, but I wasn't able to do that. Doesn't matter too much, though, because he goes into this next phase here where he does this uh, attack, and I can just... Uh, this is a very, very easy attack to avoid. You just basically dodge over the AoEs as they come at you, and it's pretty simple overall. He's going to do a tail swipe when he comes down from this attack, so I need to kind of keep my distance. I'm going to use that time to activate my uh, supplementary damage bonus. And then I kind of don't play it how I want to afterwards. Uh, I wish the Lancelot didn't stay too close to the dragon, because that makes the slow fields kind of spawn on top of him under his feet, which is what's going to kind of mess up some of the uh, stuff I wanted to do here. Like, I was slowed there, so I ended up getting hit when I didn't want to, which is a little unfortunate. So I do end up having to activate my guts here. Not really a huge deal. Uh, Lancelot does get the uh, chain off. He got that up really fast. I'm guessing he's running uplift because I'm only at 56% right now and I didn't even think I was playing the fight that poorly. But maybe I'm just not attacking normally as much as I should. I'm just using my heavy attacks. But not really a big deal. I still feel like I've gotten a lot of damage off in this fight and I did get a lot of honors after this to my knowledge. So not really a huge deal. Do end up getting hit one more time there, unfortunately. And then I just guard that attack because... I wasn't really ready to jump over it in the most effective way. And then the Charlotta goes in, and I realize, okay, they're going in. I need to make sure that I get my uh, special up in time so I can combo off of this. So I just go uh, start going ham on the enemy myself here. And I do reach 100% just in time by just kind of spamming all of my abilities, making sure I get uh, as much damage off as I can in order to reach that uh, threshold there. 
And we get a easy three burst off, which gets him to 30, 13% here. So at this point, I'm just going to use more Arbor's Hammers and do as much damage as I can until the fight is over, which is in two more percent. So Lancelot gets one more style point off here, and we end the fight without too much issue. I did get hit a few times in the uh, middle there in the Enraged Phage, which was not ideal, but not really a super difficult fight overall. Still a really fast fight. You can still kind of see the damage output that the character can have and how you can end a lot of these problem move fights super, super easily. So... Since that was a really short fight, I kind of wanted to just showcase more specifics of Zeta in a fight where it's kind of easier to see just in general because uh, I'm the only one in this fight. Like I said, I'm not going to show the full fight here, but you can kind of see the thought process here. I've paralyzed the enemy so I can get some easier attacks off here. So I was trying to get the Link attack off, but he goes into a state where I'm unable to finish the Link attack bar. So I just wait until he comes back down and uh, then use a... Uh, Loop Finisher here to activate the Link Attack, and then I can go into an Arvis Hammer here to uh, get the full damage there. I'm reaching about 669k with uh, the current uh, bonuses I have on my damage cap, which is really nice when I uh, activate Arvis Hammer properly. And if you're able to do the uh, loops properly with uh, your supplementary damage active and only use two loops, that can be really nice as well to increase your DPS, which you probably see me do a few times here, so... Ideally, you're going to want to stay in the air as much as possible, although when you're doing solo challenges like this, you might need to be a little bit safer here just in general because you might not be always able to uh, do everything you need to here. I do end up getting sand tombed here because I'm bad at the game, so I am going to eat this hit no matter what here, but I think that's the only kind of really glaring negative part of this to my, to my, in, as far as what I can remember at least. So I'm just going to dodge out of the way of these other attacks until I'm in a position where I can easily uh, attack him again here. So it comes back down. I think I do get hit by the laser because I wasn't expecting him to go a, like a full 360 here. So I just dodged behind him. Didn't think I was going to get hit there. Not a huge deal, though. I've still got plenty of health. And I just uh, immediately start looping again to uh, avoid the attack on the ground there. To make sure I don't get hit by that. Since that's one of the benefits of Zeta, you can stay in the air and not get hit by a lot of the grounded AoEs and grounded attacks like that, which is really nice. Once I get a link attack, I can uh, use another Arvis Hammer, and then I can go into another Arvis Hammer after that as well. So... You can kind of see here that there's just a lot of easy ways to get a uh, damage here with uh, Zeta and easy ways to kind of chain into your loops here, which isn't too difficult. Now, ideally in fights, you're going to want to t time your Wing Clipper in uh, situations where you're able to actually hit the enemy since you're kind of locked in place when you use it and the range is not as big as you might think it is. It doesn't push you forward or anything, so you want to be on top of the enemy when you use it. And I just kind of skip ahead in the fight here also just because I didn't really feel the need to show off everything here. Pretty simple fight. You can solo some of these earlier proud mode dragons. They're not really that tough with uh, Zeta and with other characters too, honestly. They're not that bad. But I just kind of want to showcase the general skill set of the character, and I felt like that was a decent fight to do that. I think that's going to cover it for this guide, though. She's not super, super technically or mechanically intensive. She's pretty straightforward as far as using your loops and trying to get as much damage out of aerial combat as you can. Uh, if you did enjoy the guide and you did learn something, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, comment down below any feedback on how I can improve these further, because I do want to cover everyone. So once again, thank you all for the support. I do appreciate it. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I will see you back here soon with even more guides.